I'm very honored to present Liberty Science Center's 2016 Genius Award to Kip Thorne. His numerous other honors include the Albert Einstein Medal, the UNESCO Niels Bohr Gold Medal, the California Scientist of the Year, and early this month it was announced that Kip will receive a share of his $3 million, of the $3 million special breakthrough prize for fundamental physics that is being given to the team of 1,012 scientists who recently discovered gravitational waves. Let's look at the video. Astrophysicist Kip Thorne's research has focused on the general theory of relativity, black holes, wormholes, relativistic stars, and gravitational waves. He is co-founder of LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, two L-shaped detectors in Louisiana and Washington State, which recently made the scientific discovery of the 21st century. 100 years ago, Einstein predicted the existence of gravitational waves, but their existence was in doubt until a few months ago when LIGO detected them emanating from two black holes that collided a billion years ago. Thorne's own universe blurs the line between fact and fiction. He co-authored the treatment and was an executive producer of Christopher Nolan's 2014 film, Interstellar. In reality, Thorne's research on gravitational waves and relativistic astrophysics stretches the imagination more than the wildest of science fiction movies. He is best known for his theory that wormholes found in space can be used for time travel. Unlike gravitational waves, wormholes have yet to be detected, but don't count them and Thorne out. Thorne, who received his BS from Caltech and PhD from Princeton, has won numerous international honors. His current research is on the nonlinear dynamics of curved space-time. But let's go straight to the matter. Kip Thorne is a genius, and as of right now, he's also a Liberty Science Center genius. Dr. Thorne, for your important work in advancing our understanding of some of the most mind-boggling objects in the universe, and I like to include in that black holes and worms, because I don't understand one thing about those two, <laughs> so maybe you can explain them to me. It gives me great pleasure to present you with Liberty Science Center's Distinguished Genius Award. Thank you, Jennifer. I feel like a fraud. I'm not a genius, but I happen to be associated with a number of people who really are a huge and very talented team that pulled off the discovery of gravitational waves a few months ago, uh, which is analogous to, LIGO, to, to Galileo turning his telescope on the heavens for the first time. Uh, we have turned our telescope on the heavens and seen a whole new kind of radiation and it is the team that pulled it off, a team of 1,012 scientists who are absolutely superb. I just happen to have been there at the beginning. Uh, I also have benefited from a huge, superb set of uh, students who have done great research, much greater than my own research, and they all make me look good. And so in behalf of all of them, as well as myself, I thank you very much. It's such a pleasure to be here at this fabulous Liberty Science Center and to admire what you are doing here, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So Kip, I mean, you're one of my heroes because I'm kind of a closet cosmologist. And I admire that you're able to ponder many exotic objects that mere mortals find to be imponderable. I mean, black holes, wormholes, parallel universes. Now tell me, be honest. Which of these do we know for sure actually exist? 
only black holes. We just saw two of them collide with LIGO. That was the source of the gravitational waves that uh, we observed. And the short shapes of the waves matched perfectly within the uh, observational error, the predictions of what should have been produced by colliding black holes. We know they are there. Wormholes are speculation. Parallel universes are speculation. We will have to see. I'm pessimistic about wormholes, despite the fact my name is so associated with them. More optimistic about parallel universes. But I've tried to prove wormholes don't exist, and I have, have failed. So for the moment, uh, I'll, I'll hold my skepticism, and we will see. The next generation will have to find the answers. So gravitational waves, in 20 seconds, can you tell us what they are and why it took 100 years to find them? Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space and time produced when black holes collide, produced in the birth of the universe and other cataclysmic events. It took a uh, hundred years because they are so weak by the time they reach Earth that they hardly move things at all. They pushed mirrors back and forth in our instruments that are uh, about two and a half miles apart by an amount that is one one hundredth the diameter of a proton, unbelievably small amount. But this superb team, this is superb experimental team, managed to see that. So I understand that we actually heard a chirp from the detector. Let's take a listen to this. So Dr. Thorne, tell us, what are we hearing? What are we listening to? So two black holes were going around and around each other very fast at speeds of half the speed of light. And as they went around, they emitted these waves, which took away energy, so they spiraled together. As they spiraled together, the speed of going around went higher and higher, and they created these waves that are right in the audio frequency band of the air. And they, because they were, the, the black holes were going faster and faster, the sound went whoop, whoop. There's a wonderful uh, cartoon in the New Yorker. The, uh, a few days after gravity waves were discovered, two, black, two birds sitting on a branch, one turns to the other and said, is that you or was that two black holes colliding? <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, just we're gonna listen to this once again because you're hearing the sounds of the early universe once more. Marvelous. Wait, can you show us your t-shirt? Actually, I brought one for you because I was told that uh, you'd wear nothing but t-shirts. So no, I see you're wearing something else. but uh. I'll, I'll put it on soon. Let's have a look. Very nice. So what you're seeing is from a computer simulation by what, uh, something called the SXS team, which is a Cornell, joint Cornell, Caltech, Toronto team that did s computer simulations of the source of gravitational waves that the LIGO team saw, so LIGO and, and SXS. What you see at the top is the two black holes right after they collided and merged as seen in our universe. In the movie Interstellar, uh, Matthew McConaughey goes into the fifth dimension. And so what you see here is from computer simulation of what this would have looked like if you were in the fifth dimension looking in at our universe at the colliding black holes. What looks like is this red splash that it, it was made when the black holes collided. It created a storm, much like a storm in the ocean, but a storm in the fabric of space and time, which is depicted there accurately. Uh, and that produced the waves that carried off as much power as 50 times all the stars in the universe put together, coming off from that splash for a tiny fraction of a second, coming to Earth and bringing us these signals. Wow, I will cherish this and wear this proudly. All right, I have one last question while you're up here. So was Einstein wrong about anything? Yeah, he was wrong about this. He said that uh, humans will never detect these gravitational waves because they're so weak. And this superb LIGO team proved him wrong in the process of proving him right that they do exist. All right, mixed answer. Okay, thank you very much, Kip, and thank you, Jennifer.
Appreciate it.